Soon, another troop ship will be slipping out from an English port, dropping down on the tide toward the ocean beyond. A common enough sight these days, and commonplace maybe, except for those who leave. And those who stay behind. For them comes a sharp break with familiar things. And as they set sail, the cheers and songs hide mixed emotions. No new thing for Britain, this sending of men to the far corners of the earth. What is new is the kind of force she sends. A hard core of professionals, and for the rest, young men called up for national service. This is something that affects the life of every man in Britain of military age. Today, all must serve their time in the armed forces. Even when they return to their jobs in field and factory, their obligation is not ended. Those who were soldiers, for example, must serve with Britain's great reserve force, the Territorial Army, like this young man here. His day's work over, he's turning up for one of the compulsory training parades. The skill and knowledge he has acquired as a national serviceman must be kept up to date, for there is no telling when he might be needed. Permission to join the car, Sergeant? Where have you been? Got held up because of trains. Bad weather. No excuse. Right. Falling over there. It is not long since many of the men here, like the sergeant instructor, gained the Medal of Korea, where they served alongside the Americans, the first in the field. And with men from Canada, from South Africa, from India, from Australia and New Zealand, and many other countries. Hi guys, welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be looking into another um, uniform, as per usual. Um, so today is um, a uniform belonging to a soldier of the Royal Hampshire Regiment, um, very, very early uh, post-war. Um, this one, uh, the battle dress itself is dated 1946, um, so the royal uh, title, if the um, soldier in question joined very, very, was part of the regiment at that time. Um, it's very, very, very early uh, style, especially with the shoulder titles um, that are on this uh, particular item, um, to know a very, very early um, uh, Royal Hampshire item. Um, the regiment received its royal title in 1946. Um, before then, it was just the Hampshire Regiment. Okay, so without further ado, we'll jump straight into the video and uh, we'll get started. See you then. Welcome back. Now I have the uniform beside me and we'll go from top to bottom and we'll work our way through. And then I'll do, uh, there'll be a couple of cuts where I'll move the uh, mannequin round and then we'll carry on with the video from there. Okay, so as I said, go from top to bottom. Um, starting at the top, we have the uh, dark blue um, navy beret. Um, on the large crown size, which was uh, very, very, um, um, almost a staple of the British Army um, at this period post-war. Um, so, um, sort of 1946 to 8 onwards, basically. More sort of 1948 onwards. Um, <clears throat> the berry has um, appeared before in my Malaya video, which was my previous video, which I'll leave a link either below or leave a little annotation up there, or wherever it will appear. Um, if I can, I'm still trying to work out how to do that. But if if not, if I can not get it up there, I'll leave it down below in the uh, in the uh, description. Um, <clears throat> and if you want to have a look at that video in general as well, so I would say I would suggest it very much. So to get back to it, um, dark blue barrow with the regimental uh, cap badge. So at this point, um, the regiment was known as the Royal Hampshire Regiment. Um, its royal title was given in 1946. So very accustomed to the actual. Um, yeah, this certain battle dress um, blouse was made as well. Um, so the crown, uh, King's crown, obviously that will change to a Queen's crown in 1953 with the um, coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Um, wreath, enclosed in the wreath, is the tiger denoting the regiment's service in India um, and the rose denoting the um, county itself of Hampshire with the, obviously, Royal Hampshire underneath. <coughs> um, Quickly, just take off the barrier quickly. Um, the shirt um, is a altered type 
um, originally a collarless shirt, I believe. The collar has been added. Um, and the um, shirt itself has been altered, which originally was an overhead with a few buttons from um, the uh, top of the collar down to probably about the navel. Um, but it has been added with extra buttons and made into a full length uh, um, button open and closed shirt. Um, and obviously with the addition of a tie as well. Very much a um, a much thing seen at this sort of point um, as standard um, dress. So normally um, the only sort of times you'll see pre this um, with um, open collar and tie was with um, say certain NCOs, higher ranking NCOs and officers um, pre that which would have their collar open and not done up all the way um, and it was pressed. Um, the standard cut of this was sort of a um, uh, almost like a suit jacket sort of style with the open collar which would then be kept which would then be picked up by the 1949 pattern battle dress um, a few years later <coughs> quickly about quickly about the battle dress itself in its making before we go on to the actual items on it and um, this one was made in Toronto Canada in 1946 and um, very much unlike most Canadian battle dresses actually um, the color is more of a British um, weave um, and dye than uh, say Canadian which is more of a darker green. Um, I'll try and get like a example picture maybe at the end of the uh, video to give you an example of that <coughs> in comparison with this. As I said this one made in 1946 which is very custom to um, the period shown really here. So um, this denotes obviously the Royal Hampshire Regiment. Um, as I said pre-1946 it was just the Hampshire Regiment. Um, and with these sort of additions, it's very much so a very regimental parade style um, of battle dress. So, um, at first glance, you would think this was a 1949 pattern, but um, certain things give it away. The highness of the start of the open collar. Um, 49 um, pattern normally has its collar starting slightly lower down, probably say an inch or so, or an inch and a half um, below where this one is starting. Um, you would also think it was 49 because where the buttons um, on the um, on the uh, pockets however these buttons are just basically for decoration um, and the same on the cuffs as well so these are regimental buttons it's obviously with the um, regimental insignia <coughs> that have been added on top of the pocket even though to fasten it down there's a standard button the only place that these buttons have been added that are functional is on the epaulets where the null buttons have been replaced with the regimental style up on the um, on the epaulet on the shoulder. I'll have a closer picture of that um, near the end um, of the video itself once we've sort of wrapped up the whole general thing of it. Um, I'll show you a little bit items more closely like the buttons, the metal ribbons and the um, uh, label inside as well. <clears throat> or the markings inside I should say. As I said about the pockets, so addition of the regimental buttons, um closed but closed concealed button design, um similar to that of the um uh, early war um pattern battle dress and obviously of the nineteen forty nine. The only um difference main differences between with the buttons in, in relation to buttons with nineteen forty nine is the pockets um would be um non con non concealed buttons in general service really with the 49 pattern belt dress um going down standard fastening for the um battle dress was the standard uh, clasp and uh, buckle down the bottom on the side here and with the addition of the 37 pattern um uh, belt and equipment really and um, 37 obviously was still obviously standard use at this point um, people sort of say, well, wouldn't 44 be used? 44 was a um, theatre specific um, issue item. Say for troops going to the um, Far East, they'd be issued 40, 40, um, 4 pattern equipment. And you, you sort of see it with um, paratroopers um, being issued it when they go to Cyprus and for training exercises in Norway as well. Um, so there's footage of. Um, paratroopers going out to Cyprus for um, sort of standby 
um, deployments. So they were being put to Cyprus in case of anything cropping up in the Middle East. They were being issued 44 pattern um, equipment. And obviously it was, it was more of a general issue item <coughs> with um, troops in Malaya and places like that. And you sort of see it being issued a little bit more in Korea as well. But 37 was still being um, mass produced at this point. Um, at this point, obviously, national service was in was coming into full effect um, post 1948 up until 1962. I think is when they stopped national service. 37 was still being mass produced for this influx of um, national service been coming in into the army and navy and air force, obviously. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of the front. We'll quickly go on to the metal ribbons before we carry on. Um, as I said, I'll do a closer uh, look up of the metal, um, closer look at the metal ribbons at the end of the video. Um, but I'll quickly go through um, what we have on this gentleman here. So quickly, actually, to point out before we go on to the metal ribbons itself, um, going through these because you you read ribbons as sort of like you would read a book. You go from left to right, and it almost reads like a story. Of, of this, of this gentleman's service, of anyone's service, if you read their um, medals. Um, I do not believe this gentleman served with the regiments, with the Royal Re Royal Hampshire Regiment, during the war itself. So during the Second World War. Um, for one main reason, the first medal on his, on, his, um, on his breast is the Burma Star. The regiment never served in the Far East during the Second World War. They mostly kept to Europe and... Um, the Middle East and North Africa, they kept on that side of the world. Um, so that is the main thing. So I believe he either transferred very, very late in the war or post war. So I said the Burma Star, 19, um, so from 1941 um, to 1945, basically when it's sort of it's going to be issued. There are date specific, um, uh, um, date specific things to the actual awarding of this medal. Um, I'll leave a link in, in the description below to um, the official um, um, dot .gov's website or the Ministry of Defence website where it gives for the um, awarding of these medals. <clears throat> Next one is the um, Defence Medal. Um, this is uh, it's another wartime medal. Um, for uh, Again, I'll, that link will be in below. I can't remember the exact nomenclature for the actual awarding of this medal. But I base it, I think it's mainly for like um, for um, duration of service during the war itself, and for like home defence. I believe I can't exactly remember what general general service basically within the war. It's almost like, basically what the, the um, last medal on this um, gentleman's ribbon bar denotes is for sort of wartime service, like the defence. Then we have the war medal itself, and then to thirty nine hundred forty five, similar sort of thing for service during the war itself. And that was sort of several medals awarded during the war which sort of um kind of sort of meant the same thing in a way but um on different sort of perspective really. but you, you'll, you'll get the picture so as i said war medal no, like number five and the last medal is the um only post-war one that we have um for the gentleman so this is the general service medal um which was awarded after the war um up until um 1962 when it was replaced with the new general service which was um, a slight change in the design with the um, it still kept the purple and green as it was on, as it is on here but in a different um, configuration to as it is here um, so I would guess this gentleman served with the Royal Hampshire Regiment during the period he was awarded this um, and also during this period whilst on service which I believe probably would have been either Malaya um, was um, awarded was basically mentioned dispatches so was awarded um, the, I believe it's the oak leaf on top of, it's basically almost like they're being um, awarded a bar. Um, so say for, um, I believe the defence medal or the war medal, um, or things like that, you, um, <clears throat> or even like the, like, give it an example, like the Africa star, if you um, served during a certain period as well, um, whilst the uh, given the Africa Star, you were awarded the bar, which given you uh, extra deployment. Say if you were the, in in the in, in the African campaign earlier as well, you were awarded the bar, denoting that service as well. So it was sort of like an addition, an extra award on top of your current award. Um, so basically, being mentioned as patches is um, certain gallantry acts or anything to that sort of extent. Um, so that's been added. Um, 
anything higher than that, you'd be rewarded basically a, an, another medal for certain types of gallantry or service, really. Again, everything that I'm saying is probably a bit all garbled, <laughs> um, but I'll leave a link to the, in down below to the uh, Ministry of Defence uh, medal awarding um, uh, page. <clears throat> So yeah, so that's it mainly for the front. I'll um, quickly pause the video and I'll spin the um, uh, mannequin around and then we'll have a look at the side. Now we can see the side of the mannequin, um, <clears throat> or the uniform I should say. Um, we can see the shoulder title, so I'll just bring it a little bit more here. So you can see the shoulder title which says Royal Hampshire, which is um, yellow or gold um, on, uh, so lettering on black uh, background. Um, very much a, uh, a um, a site denoting with the regiment um, up to this point, um, sort of the um, non-official uh, shoulder title of the regiment was the was um, the Hampshire Regiment um, in this colour scheme. Um, up to that point, it was slightly altered um, pre D-Day um, when the regiment was well, well, the first battalion, for example, was. Um, um, basically an order through to um, replace all non-official shoulder titles with the um, white lettering on red background um, during the invade during the Normandy invasion um, and these later basically almost disappeared um, later on in the campaign and then the regiment whilst it was back in England for the duration of the war um, for the battalion the first battalion I mean then all um, turned back to the old style of shoulder title, but most of the other battalions within the regiment itself kept the um, uh, yellow or gold on black um, lettering. Obviously, this is a um, 1946 edition, uh, mostly because with the regiment receiving the royal title, that thing. Um, there's no rank on this um, battery itself. I um, I don't know if there ever was. Um, I don't know if this gentleman ever received a rank or anything along those lines. Um, from what it looks like, possibly they could have been of a um, more senior NCO, but I'm not entirely sure. I've got no other information, nor there was no rank on these. But um, generally, as I have this displayed normally, I normally have pins um, for Company Sergeant Major um, uh, uh, cuffs, um, so um, cuff um, insignia on here with the uh, red sash as as it is here with this. I'll add, leave a picture in, in the uh, end of the video as well denoting what I normally have displayed as, but for, obviously for this video, bare bones what it is actually, but yeah. So there's, there's the arm with the uh, shoulder title. As I said before, on the cuff is the addition of the um, decoration basically of the regimental buttons. And lifting up the arm, simple peek down the side. It's almost sort of where it's sort of been, um, I think, been kept or been ironed really. It's sort of pleated in a way. Um, it's a very, very, very nice weave. It's a lovely, lovely piece. This being made in Canada as well, it's been um, very well made, not been rushed as well. And obviously the um, 37 pattern belt as well. So um, I'll. I'll Cut it here again, I'll spin it around to the back and then we'll have a look at the uh, rear of the, um, rear of the uniform. Okay, welcome back to the next, next bit. As you can see, main single seam down the back of the uh, battress itself. A little bit um, strangely thing, I think it's where it's been stored or been hung. It's a bit creased in a way, but and where it's been ironed. It's been folded actually, I should say. Um, back of the belt, obviously, we're fastened at the waist. Um, the brasses are a bit uh, dull and um, they could need a good clean I don't have any of the um and I've basically run out of uh, brass and things like that so I need a good clean eventually um so yeah not much really to see but um if you can see like the very very nice sort of um the weave is very very nice in itself um as I, as again I'll get a bit of more of a closer uh, look into uh, the item itself and then we'll um we'll go from there so yeah um the other side is basically is that the same, so I won't bother showing that. It's just um, just the, basically just the opposite of what you've already seen. Um, so I'll spin it around again to the front, and then we'll uh, wrap up this, and then I'll leave um, a few more little clips in the end 
of the um, stuffing close-ups of the metal ribbons and the um, uh, labels etc. So we just cut here. So I hope you enjoy that video. Um, again, as I said, um, I'll leave a couple of little clips of the um, clo of the close-ups basically on this uh, bath dress. And um, any questions you have, please leave in the comments down below, or please uh, message me via my um, page. I'll leave the script. I'll leave the link in down below for that as well. Um, um, but basically. As you can tell, I have a very fondness for this regiment. Um, it was my dad's regiment, um, and I've grown up with an appreciation of the history and an almost love for the regiment. Um, and I have many, many items relating to the regiment itself, as I showed you with the previous one, and some of the items behind me as well. Um, again, I'll leave some pictures of the display up on the, um, I think actually I might have already have put some pictures of the display and of this actually um, on my on my Facebook page as well. So please go and have a look at that. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, every anything is much is very much appreciated. Um, I'm only a small channel. Um, I've had a little bit more of a sort of a pickup growing over the past uh, well last year really courtesy of and thankfulness to some um, friends of mine um, and I'll link their their channels as well and a link descriptions of uh, my link uh, pages etc of theirs down below as well um, many many thanks hope you enjoyed and goodbye so here's a close-up of the medals as I said I would so we have the Burma star um, so being awarded between um, 1941 and 1945 obviously is when the uh, Far East campaign kicked off. <coughs> Excuse me. We then have the Defence Medal. Um, we then have the um, War Medal, 3945. And then we have the General Service Medal um, um, awarded post war, with the addition of being mentioned in dispatches with the Oak Leaf as well. As I said, it's almost like a bar, basically being awarded for gallantry. Um, anything higher, I believe, would be an, a different medal or anything, uh, the gallantry medal in itself awarded. But in the case, just mentioned dispatches. But that's not putting a damper on the actual um, anyone who was mentioned dispatches or awarded this item. It's just um, the um, type of gallantry that is um, basically awarded itself. And what denotes certain types of gallantry. So, yeah, so that's them. Any questions on them, please. Uh, Put description below as well, and then we'll uh, crack on with the uh, next little close up as well. Quick little close up of the shoulder titles. So, so Royal Hampshire, as I've explained, um, and obviously the yellow or gold normally on black. So, this was the standard one for the, uh, the period. Um, before this, I'll try and get like a little picture. Um, it was bloody just the Hampshire Regiment. And regiment was abbreviated um, and was sort of slightly longer. During the war as well, there was standard short ones just with Hampshire, with um, basically just basically almost like that, just with the um, yellow on black, um, and also with the white on red um, titles, just with Hampshire on them as well. But this was the standard one for the post war period up until when batch dress and items like this were phased out. Okay. Little addition as well, I mentioned about the buttons, so standard regimental buttons, just like the cap, the earlier style cap badges, obviously um, without the crown, so without the crown, um, but the crown generally wasn't um, a feature on buttons all the way up to um, the actual um, dissolvement of the regiment itself in 1992, um, so the amalgamation I should say with the uh, Queen's Regiment and into the PWRR. So, standard buttons for the regiment. As I said, very, very similar to the uh, cat badge. Um, wreath with tiger and then the rose as well. So here's the label inside. So, manufacturer is Deval. Um, I can't exactly make out the wording here itself, but I know that's clothes, obviously, but I don't really know what this says. It's a bit... 
Um, I think the uh, the ink sort of bleeded into the wording itself. It might be Devonshire. I'm not sure. Devonshire clothes. I'm not sure. Can't really make out. It might be Devonshire. Um, but the ma manufactured location itself is Toronto, Canada. Battle dress. Uh, sorry, blouse is serge. Battle dress. Size eleven. Height um, five foot nine inches by I think eight. To, uh, so five foot nine inches to. 6.1 or 5 actually it might be 6 uh, 5 9 to 5 10 i believe that is sorry <laughs> yeah 5 9 to 5 10 um breast is 38 to 39 and the date of manufacture if we could just bring that up just there is uh june 1946 and also i noticed just when i was actually just taking the actual batteries off the black off the mannequin itself I just quickly move it up here is the uh, Canadian uh, broad arrow, so the C um, surrounding the broad arrow itself denoting Canadian manufacturer.